5 Network. This is Sportsline. Hey there, Sportsline on your television. Steve Lehman here with you. Glad you are here with us on this Tuesday night on News Channel 5 Plus. A pretty big night in Nashville sports. The Predators starting the unofficial beginning, I guess, of the second half of the season coming off of the All-Star break. They get the Blackhawks at home to now. Right now they trail one nothing as they get set to start the second period over at Bridgestone Arena. David Campfey with a goal in the first period for the Blackhawks. So the Preds, who largely looked uninterested in that first period, need to get things going. It's hard when you come back from a break like that. You're facing a team right now and the Blackhawks who have really struggled. They are in the last place in the Central Division. They've spent more time there in the last month or so than they have in the last eight or nine seasons combined at any point in time. That's how proud of a franchise that is. But they're still loaded. I mean, they still have Patrick Kane. They still have Jonathan Taze, Brandon Saad. This is a team that has firepower. And tonight they came out looking like they wanted it more. They lead one nothing, with plenty of time for the Predators to bounce back and get things going. Philip Forsberg not in the lineup tonight. He is Expected to return sooner rather than later. He practiced yesterday, took the non-contact jersey off, but not in the lineup tonight. You see Soros in goal tonight, though, so the Preds giving Pecorino the night off after what he did in the All-Star game on Sunday. So they continue a bit of that platoon between their goaltenders right now, and that's a really nice luxury to have. You see Soros has been a real revelation for this team because... If you can continue to play him, maybe not every other game, but once a week or so here, one, he's played really well. The Predators have continued to pick up points in the games in which he's played. But most importantly, a year ago, they got Pecorino some rest. And he looked fresh for the playoffs. He was the best he could possibly be in the postseason. That's a big reason why the Predators won three rounds and got all the way to the Stanley Cup Final. Their goal for this season is to play him about 55 to 60 games before the playoffs. Early on in the year, that looked like it was going to be a difficult task because he was just playing so much. He was playing in games that they needed him to play. But now Soros has found his groove, and he's been really, really good lately. And that has allowed them to give Pekka a little bit more rest. And now all of a sudden, that 60-game total, maybe even the 55-game total, are real possibilities. And that would be huge for this team, who looks to be a pretty much sure thing for the playoffs at this point, but will be battling for home ice advantage in the second half of the season. Great to get there, great to be in that position, but as much as anything, you want Pekka Rene to play the way he played last season, when he absolutely dominated in the playoffs. College basketball tonight, Vanderbilt just about to tip off in Rupp Arena against Kentucky. Wildcats back into the top 25 this week at number 21 after their huge win in Morgantown against 17th ranked West Virginia over the weekend. It was kind of a, a coming of age night for that young Kentucky team for John Calipari. Meanwhile, Vanderbilt got its marquee win of the season as well on Saturday as the SEC really flexed its muscles against the Big 12 in the SEC Big 12 Challenge. Vanderbilt, of course, knocking off TCU by three at home. Some big plays down the stretch there, largely by seniors. Riley Lachance with a couple of big buckets late in that game. Not really a coming-of-age moment, but a moment where the seniors really took control of this team. And they have over the last couple of weeks. Their last three games, they've won two of the three now. The other game, they had a chance to win. Vanderbilt is finally starting to play better basketball. Still 8-13 and 13 on the year, long way to go. But Saturday may be a sign that this team is starting to really head in the right direction for Bryce Drew this year. So what wins out tonight in Rupp? Is it the veteran leadership of Vanderbilt or is it the young guns coming of age for John Calipari and Kentucky? And then football. The big news today Coming from the Tennessee Titans, Mike Vrabel has made his hires for his offensive and defensive coordinator positions. And there are a couple of guys that are going to be surprise names. And if you talk to people around the league, really home run hires 
for a guy who is a first-year head coach taking over a team constructed the way the Titans are. Vrabel hired Matt LaFleur, the Rams offensive coordinator, to the same position here to be the offensive coordinator of the Titans. And he, ret he hired retired Ravens defensive coordinator Dean Pease to come in and be the defensive coordinator. Now, a couple things about that. Number one, when you look at Matt LaFleur, he, like Vrabel and Carolina's Steve Wilkes, who's now the head coach at Arizona, those three guys were the three guys that John Robinson interviewed for Tennessee's head coaching job. So think about that for a second. Matt LaFleur was a serious candidate to be the Titans' head coach. And today, Mike Vrabel introduced him as his offensive coordinator. That is a home run hire, if I've ever heard of one. LaFleur's track record is pretty phenomenal. He's a young guy, 38 years of age. He's never actually called plays, so that's the advantage of him coming here. That's why he would leave Los Angeles to come here, frankly. But he studied under two of the brightest young offensive minds in the National Football League, Kyle Shanahan in Atlanta, where he served as the quarterback's coach and helped Matt Ryan have an MVP season last year on the way to the Super Bowl. And then this season in Los Angeles with Sean McVay, the young rising star coach with all the creative offensive ideas that really got the Rams going this year. LaFleur, a big part of that. Offensive coordinator, he didn't call the plays, but again, he tutored Jared Goff, who was the number one pick two seasons ago and frankly looked lost, looked like a complete bust in his rookie season. This year he played so well he made the Pro Bowl over the weekend. So Matt LaFleur comes as the offensive coordinator. He gives you a guy that's going to give you offensive change is used to working with quarterbacks and helping them get to the next level. That's huge for Marcus Mariota. And he's going to open things up. Everybody you talk to, the, the options, the, the ability to do different things in the offenses where LaFleur has come from, the offenses that he's studied, is big. And it's available. And now it's part of the Titans' repertoire. So kudos to Mike Vrabel on that hire. And then Dean Pease, a guy he played for in New England as a linebacker's coach, later as a defensive coordinator, a guy who's helped teams win Super Bowls both in New England and then Baltimore. Spent the last six seasons in Baltimore. He comes on as a defensive coordinator. He's 68 years old, still feels healthy, still feels like he loves the game. That's what he said today when asked why he would come out of retirement to come back and do this. He's going to have the opportunity to work with his son, Matt, who was a high school coach out in Colorado. He's going to come and be a part of the defensive staff here in Tennessee as well. So Dean Pease, a, a veteran with a successful track record, now takes over the defense. The only question maybe is what was the deal with the retirement a few weeks ago? And is he completely sold on coming back and doing all the work that you have to? But you have to think that Mike Vrabel and John Robinson vetted that out. Pease truly did miss the game. He wanted to get back in. And here was a chance to, one, work with a former player, a guy he likes, a guy he wanted to work with. He has that opportunity. And two, he gets a chance to work with his son, which is a pretty neat opportunity for anybody, especially in the National Football League. So a couple of hires today made by Mike Vrabel and the Titans. Here's my question for you. As you hear those hires and the names of those hires. What do you think about this staff now? And maybe more importantly, what do you think about the Vrabel hire now? Because I said last week when he was hired, he's an interesting guy. He's a guy that everybody says positive things about around the league. But he has a lot of inexperience. He's only been an assistant coach for seven years, only four of that in the National Football League, was only a coordinator for one year, and that defense he had this year in Houston was rated as the worst in the league. Now, there's a lot of extenuating factors there with injuries and other things, but still, it's one year of a defensive coordinator where the defense last year finished 11th. This year, they finished 32nd. So what I said last week is with all that inexperience, it's going to be important to see who the hires are on the staff. Well, now we've seen the hires, and you know what LaFleur brings as an offensive mind, and you know what... Pease brings as a veteran coach, 
a teaching coach, a guy with a track record of success who has the experience that maybe Vrabel does not at this point. Now you know those are the guys. So how does that make you view the Vrabel hire now? Phone lines are open, 737-7767, the number. We can also talk the Super Bowl this weekend, Super Bowl 52. Patriots going for their third title in four years. Eagles in the Super Bowl for the first time in 13. Your thoughts on that game and the matchup there. I think it's an interesting matchup. I think the better roster, frankly, is Philadelphia. But it is hard for me, especially after what we watched Tom Brady do in the fourth quarter against Jacksonville, to see a team led by Nick Foles beat a team led by Tom Brady in the Super Bowl. Think about this. Think about this stat for a second. Tom Brady and Bill Belichick have combined to win five Super Bowls. This is their eighth appearance. They're five and two so far. Their five Super Bowl victories, five Super Bowl victories, are more wins combined, or together, I should say, than Eagles coach Doug Peterson and quarterback Nick Foles have combined for in the regular season. Carson Wentz did most of the damage this year for Philadelphia. Now, Foles was incredible in the NFC Championship against Minnesota, but now he's in a Super Bowl for the first time ever. A backup quarterback thrust into that spotlight and that situation, and he's going up against the greatest coach quarterback tandem of all time in the National Football League. Brady and Belichick have won more Super Bowls, more Super Bowls together than Peterson and Foles have won games together. That's the type of mismatch you're talking about at that position. And so it's going to have to be a team effort if the Eagles are going to win it. That's my belief. 737-7767 is the number tonight. We would love to hear from you, as always, on the program. And we will begin tonight with Joe. Joe, good evening. You're first up here on Sportsline. Hey there. I think the uh, Super Bowl is going to be an interesting game next week. Like you should get ready and go and check and buy Super Bowl rings and all the experience. I'm not taking anything, taking away anything from the Eagles because they showed how good they were as far as you know being coming in and beating the uh, Vikings like they did. But you got to have, like you said, you know, your experience is going to play an important part. And uh, I think it's going to be a close game. I don't think it's going to be a boy. A lot of people think, you know, that the Eagles going to win. I don't think so. I think experience is going to win out in the end. I think it's going to be a real close game. It's about 24-21 or 24-17. Uh, the Patriots. But it's going to be a close game. I know it sounds silly, but I'm going to say, the last two games, you know, the Bible said you just pray and ask God and he'll, he'll give it. Yeah, so I know it sounds silly, but I did that the last two games and they won. So, I'm up, for, I'm up for number three on, on praying to God and asking for the, for the Patriots to win. And I think they should. Uh, I'm about to see uh, Josh McDowell's call. He's, uh, he's going to be the new coach of the Colts at the Super Bowl. I'm about to see him uh, go out as a champion and, and also hit, you know, saw the defensive corner as champions. It's all over and said that. Yeah. Well, thanks, Joe. We appreciate the call. It'll be interesting because New England will have many changes coming into this offseason. Josh McDaniels is expected to be the name, the next head coach of the Indianapolis Colts. And Matt Patricia, the defensive coordinator, is headed to Detroit to be the next head coach of the Lions. So there will be a lot of changes for Bill Belichick and that staff going into next year. Can they retain the focus that is the trademark of the Patriots way for a few more days and get themselves to the Super Bowl? We'll find out. I want to talk a little bit about that so-called Patriots way and what it means with Mike Vrabel and the Tennessee Titans. We'll do that on the other side of this break, plus more of your phone calls. 737-7767, the number. Stay tuned. Sportsline will be back after this on News Channel 5+. Plus.